Hello everybody, my name is Scott Card and welcome to my lab. If you're new to my channel, please check out my playlist if you like this content. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. It's always nice to have your patronage. Today I have another quick video on Proteus. This question comes from a coworker as well as a viewer who asked about slotted and slotted through holes in Proteus. This is not a simple process and I was not able to find a lot of information, uh, but I think that I've found a way to do this. If you know a better way, please leave a comment below. I'd love to find a better method and I'm always looking for new information. All right. Okay, welcome back. Uh, so here I have just a, a blank canvas. And uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create ourselves uh, a board edge. Uh, and this is just so that we can, we can view it uh, in the viewer. And you can see a nice simple board, uh, nothing, nothing going on here. Uh, now there are two techniques to creating, to creating slots. Uh, one of them is to just uh, create a 2D graphic that is use, uses the, um, the mechanical layer. And the board house is okay with this. They'll be, they'll be able to work out exactly what's supposed to happen with this. Uh, and, and that's, that's perfectly reasonable. For example, we could create a path like this and the board house would ask us what, what size, uh, of, of, a, of a, a milling cutter that we'd like. And, and that's, that's reasonable for doing cutouts around, uh, thermal sensors and what have you. Uh, if, if we had something more specific that we wanted to, to give a slot for uh, perhaps a, a component that was going to fit through, uh, we, we may want to get into a little bit more detail. But as you can see, there's nothing that shows up in the 3D viewer. And so if we wanted to create more, uh, more detail to, to these slots, uh, we could use the uh, 2D graphic mode. And so you can see that we can, we can quickly uh, draw something here. Uh, and I'm just using the control key to, to create the arcs. And so if this is what I wanted, that would be fine. Uh, and, and again, nothing shows up here in the 3D viewer. And so you might be tempted, you might be tempted to change the layer to say board edge. And this, this will show up in the 3D viewer, but the board house doesn't usually like this. So they may be able to accept it, maybe not. But one of the things that I've done before is where I've had a slotted hole like this and I wanted to, I wanted to have a solder pad to it is I placed a pad next to it. And as you can see, it does throw an error. But if I left this as mechanical, then I don't get the error. And I know that the board house is uh, able to, to do this because I've, I've done it in the past. Unfortunately, it's not a plated through hole. So if I wanted to make a component with this, it, it wouldn't really be uh, that successful. I mean, I could, I could create a top and a bottom uh, pad and, and, and give it a, a label uh, like so, but it's, it's not really uh, as clean or neat as, as we might wish. And so the, the option that I came up with uh, is, uh, and here's a spoiler alert, use the uh, pad stack up mode here, the pad stack mode. Um, but it's maybe not the right tool, but it gets it done. Okay. And, and uh, as, as I said in the, the intro, it's very convoluted way to do this. So there's a lot of process to it and I, I've, I've done it once already. So I'm just going to uh, walk you through uh, how I did it. And uh, as I said, if you can find a better way, please let me know. I'd love to hear this. And so uh, if we go into the pad stack mode, uh, and, and we were to create a, a new pad stack mode and give it a name, uh, some name, uh, you'll see, you'll see this menu and there's a lot going on here. Uh, but one of the first things that I noticed when I was exploring this is, uh, it, it asks for slot width and height, uh, but when we get over here to the copper, uh, it doesn't allow us to create a custom copper. And so the first thing that, that I did was I created a, a dill style pad. So a dill pad. And when we go in here, you can see the one that I created, uh, and you would, you would use create mode. I'm just going to use edit here so that we can quickly see what I've done, but I've created a name 
and I've called it 2.5 by 7 millimeter because that's the size, the actual size of the pad that I want. Uh, and you can see 2.5 millimeters by 7 millimeters. And I've put a small drill hole in it. So the drill hole is 20 thousandths of an inch. And so it's not, it's not too big, but uh, will allow them to, uh, to drill the hole and then they can go in with a router and plunge it out. This this is this is not a bad start. I mean, it, it's 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 reasonable. It gives us our, our solder resist. It gives us our solder paste, and it gives us uh, all all of that information. Uh, but we don't have the slot in here yet. And so the next thing is that I went to add stack mode, and I went and created uh, a a a pad. Okay, again create, but this time I'm just going to edit, and I set it to slotted. And I set the the height and the width and the tool diameter. Now there's a little bit of a little bit of math and a little bit of uh, thinking that you need to do here. In this case, because I wanted it fully rounded, I set the tools slot uh, to 1.5 millimeters. Uh, and so I don't know if they're going to go in with 1.5 millimeter. Uh, router or if they're going to figure it out uh, but we did have to give it some slot width and so one thousandths of an inch is the smallest that it can go and so I did that and then the 4.5 millimeter plus plus another 1.5 millimeter gives me a total height of six millimeter as we can see here the next thing is that I needed to uh, set this outside copper and so yeah top copper we had created it uh, this this one called R 2.5 by 7 millimeters and so I brought that in on the top and the bottom copper and uh, as I found out with the pad stack mode you also have to set up all of the internal layers so all 14 internal layers needed to be assigned to this uh, it, it's probably possible to uh, use non-functional if, if you did have a multi-layer board. But for today, uh, this is this is going to be okay. And so now I can place uh, one or multiple of, of these of these components. There we go. Let's do that. And uh, if you wanted, you could uh, go ahead and put some silk screen around it, for example, and create create a full a full component out of this okay so here we go we'll take take the smiley guy and we can start to assign assign pins to it so let's call this one call this two and we'll call this guy uh, three okay and finally uh, highlight everything and create create a package out of it Okay, and what that gives us is an actual package uh, that's going to be slotted. Now, uh, it appears as uh, square corners in here, but assured when they go through with the with the mill uh, that they will have uh, radii in here, and uh, the radius may may vary, but uh, I think I think it's going to be okay. Now, the question is going to be whether the board house is is acceptable with the with the solder paste or if we'd have to modify that and if there is an update to this once I send the board out to the PCB fab um, uh, I'll update you if there are any issues all right so again if you know a better way I'd love to hear about it please comment down below links to any resources would be awesome if not uh, you know I hopefully this this does the trick for you and as always, thank you very much for your time and patience when watching. If you did like this video, do give it a thumbs up. Like and subscribe if you'd like to be made aware when I make new videos. And as always, thanks for watching. Have yourself a great day. Okay, bye now.